Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, ever work with a passive a DNS? Actually, a great resource, but often something that uh, may be only available with an expensive uh, commercial service. The idea of passive DNS is that you essentially do reverse resolution, but not just by looking up pointer records, but instead uh, looking up any host names that resolve to a particular IP address in the past. Now, like I said, these solutions are available commercially, but uh, any cheap and easy ways to do it? Well, a uh, Rob is going over some ideas like for example looking at other host names in TLS certificates that's sort of uh, one actually a quite helpful way of doing this as well as some free APIs that you may be able to leverage use the sans.org website as an example so you can kind of see what other domains he was able here uh, to discover that are related to sans and resolve to the same IP addresses it looks like uh, VPN-like solutions built into operating systems is becoming a more and more common feature. Apple, of course, started doing its version of this feature with the most recent releases of iOS. Now, Microsoft is also experimenting with something they call Microsoft Edge Secure Network. These are not attempting to be sort of complete virtual private networks, but uh, essentially something that's close enough. It provides some privacy, but also is simple enough uh, where it can implement it for free. Microsoft does limit the data volume to one gigabyte per month. This is currently a preview feature with uh, Microsoft. So of course, some of the details of this feature, like for example, the data limit such may change uh, over time. And of course, to implement this data limit, they're doing some logging here. They're stating that uh, they essentially keep uh, logs about the data volume and nothing else uh, for the service window. And Chinese uh, microblogging site uh, Weibo announced a pretty odd and interesting way uh, to enforce its use policy and also compliance with local regulation. Of course, there is a fairly intensive uh, mechanism in place in order uh, to provide for enforcement. But in order to properly uh, do more self-enforcement of any regulations like that, uh, Weibo will make IP addresses and the location of users public. Of course, uh, Weibo is less concerned uh, with the violation of any privacy laws outside of China that may prevent uh, such a move. We got a couple of patches. First of all, SonicWall has uh, two patches. Uh, one that I actually consider a little bit uh, more severe, even though SonicWall only rated as a medium is an update for Sonic OS and the vulnerability here could potentially leak SSID uh, passwords. The second vulnerability is in the SonicWall global VPN client. This is a DLL hijacking vulnerability that could be exploited on the client uh, using the installer. So an attacker could swap out DLLs and uh, then execute their own commands. This is a more sort of a privilege escalation vulnerability on the client. And late last week, we also got some updates from Zoom fixes three vulnerabilities that Zoom rates as high. One gives access to process memory in on-premise meeting services. Then there is approach escalation for the Windows client and also an update package downgrade in the Zoom client. Of course, that could be used then uh, to basically install an older vulnerable version. That vulnerability only affects Mac OS. Overall, nothing here that you have to rush out, uh, just wait for automatic updates to be delivered. Well, and that's it uh, for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.